Good morning. This is your Stat Sensei, Mr. Spensei, and this is uh, extra credit um, test B, and this is the third video, and we'll be doing problems 21 to 31 in this video. So a city is interested in building a waste management facility in a certain area. 100 randomly selected residents from this area were asked, do you support the city's decision to build a waste management facility in your area? Of the 100 residents interviewed, 54 said no and 4 said yes, and 42 had no opinion. A large sample Z confidence interval for P hat plus or minus Z star, P hat, etc., was uh, constructed from these data to estimate the proportion of the area's residents who support building a waste management facility in the area. Which of the following is correct for this um, interval? The confidence interval is better is is valid because a sample size of more than thirty was used. No, sample size of thirty is for mean for means. We need NP hat and NQ hat have to be greater than ten. So that was false. That's wrong. The confidence interval is valid because each resident was asked the same question. Um, that's not a condition. The confidence interval is valid because no conditions are required. Uh, yeah, that's false. We definitely have conditions. We love to write those down. This confidence interval is not valid because the NP hat is too small. Well, so how many people said yes? Well, four. Well, four is definitely less than or equal to 10. So it fails. So this is not valid. We needed to have at least 10 say that, yeah, they were in favor of this. Number 22, the weights of a population of adult gray male, gray whale are approximately normally distributed with a mean weight of 18,000 and a standard deviation of 4,000. The weights of the population of the male humpback are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 30,000 and a standard deviation of 6,000. A certain gray whale has a weight of 24,000, so that's my X. This well would have the same standardized weight or Z-score, so they're telling us standardized weight. By the way, they didn't have to tell us the Z-score. They said standardized weight, we should know it's a Z-score. As an adult male humpback whale whose weight in kilograms is equal to which of the following? So they told us it was a Z-score, but if they just said standardized weight, I should be checking it out. And they told it was normally distributed. So Z equals... X minus mu over sigma, so 24,000 minus 18,000 divided by 4,000. So let's do that real quickly. 24,000 minus 18,000, that's the average, divided by 4,000. And I end up getting a z-score of 1.5. So there's my z-score. Well, over here, I plugged in, and I plugged in what I know. What I don't know is I don't know z, and I don't know x. But it said, oh, it has the same z-score, so I can go 1.5 equals x minus 30,000 over 6,000. So if I multiply times 6,000, and then I come back and add the 30,000, and now if I did everything right, I should end up with um, e being 39,000 for number 22, all right? Number 22 is E, 39,000. Oops. X equals 39,000, all right? Next problem. The graphs of the sampling distributions one and two of the sample mean of the sample, by the way, sampling distributions, that means we're dealing with the standard deviation of X bar, equals the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So if I increase n, my standard deviation of x bar is gonna get smaller, it's gonna get narrower. So the taller it is, the larger the sample size, or the larger the sample size, the taller it'll be. The graphs of the sampling distributions um, of the same random variable. This is important. They're telling us the population that they're drawing it from is the same population. So we have the same standard deviation for each one of them, all right? Uh, um, but they have two different sizes. So N is different from each, from each sample. Well, I can tell you right away, this, will, this sample is gonna be bigger. This will be the big sample. 
big N, small N, just because this one is taller. And as you increase your sample size, your variation decreases. So the sample size of one is less than two. No, that's false. One is definitely bigger. The sample size of one is greater than the sample size of two. So the answer to number 23 is definitely B. That's true because this one will have a larger sample size. All right. So 23 is B. Moving on. Number 24. The histogram below displays the times and minutes needed for each chimpanzee in a sample of 26 to complete a simple random sample, simple navigational task. So our sample size is 26. It is determined, uh, it was determined that the largest observation 93 is an outlier. All right. Which of the following box plots could represent the histogram? Well, first off, I went, well, 26 times 0.25, that gives me quartile one at 6.5. 26 times 0.5 gives me my median at 13. 26 times 0.75 gives me Q3. All right, so first off, they tell me it's an outlier. So I'm going to sit there and check. It's like, you know what, every single one of these graphs, they look good on the outlier. So that didn't help me a whole lot. But the next value that's not an outlier is around 70. Right, because that's not an outlier. So I should have a bar going up to 70. Well, this bar goes up to 80. That's too far. This bar goes up to 70. So looks so far so good. This bar goes way above 80. I should be at 70. This one goes above 80. So too far. And this one looks pretty good. So now I'm down to C and D as being my possibilities. All right. And I look at it and I was like, well, Q1 is about the same. So the big difference is in the median, all right? So this median is occurring somewhere less than 20. This one's occurring at over 20. And we went 26 times 0.5 is 13. So my median will be my 13th value. Well, six plus four is 10. So that's not high enough. So my median is going to occur somewhere between the 20th and 30th value. I don't know where. But it's not that six plus four is 10. It won't be there, it won't be in this category. It has to be between the 20th and 30th. Well, between the 20th and 30th, that's right here. This is less than 20. That gets rid of that. My answer choice is D because I need it to be somewhere between six plus four. I needed it somewhere between the 20th and 30th because we said it had to be the 13th value. Six plus four is 10. That's not enough. So this goes too high, but I know that somewhere in that 20 to 30 is where it's going to be. So my answer to uh, 24 is D. For 25, when performing a test of significance about a population mean, a T distribution instead of a normal distribution is often utilized. Well, when do we do that? For a Z, it's either a proportion or we know the standard deviation of the population. For a T, we're using the standard deviation of the sample. Which of the following is the most appropriate explanation for this? The sample size is not large enough. No. The sample size does not follow. No, they both have to. There is an increase in the variability of the test statistic due to estimation of population standard deviation. Estimation of the population. Huh. That is what we're doing here. So that's possibly it. The sample disk standard deviation is unknown. No, we definitely know the sample standard deviation. We don't know the population. The population standard deviation is too large. Nope. The only possible answer is C. Because we use the test statistic, we use the sample standard deviation to estimate the population standard deviation. So we're using S. And when you have S or the sample standard deviation, it must be a T. So 25 is C. All right, moving on to 26. Random variable X is normally distributed with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3. So X mean is 10, standard deviation is 3. And Y has a mean of 9 and a standard deviation of 4. If X and Y are independent, which of the following describes the distribution of Y minus X? So Y minus X is 9 minus 10 we can combine means directly and we can just add or subtract or do whatever they say we end up getting negative one so normal with a mean of one nope 
Nope. So it has to be one of these with negative ones. Great. They told us they were independent, and because they're independent, we can go bind standard deviations. So I want to go 4 minus 3, only we can't do that. We have to square them and sum them. So square root of 16 plus 9 equals the square root of 25, which is 5. So my answer to 26 is C. All right? A t-statistic was used to conduct a test of the null hypothesis mu equals zero against the alternative not equal zero with a p-value of 0.056. All right, so what do we have here? We have a not equal, which means my because it's not equal, that's a two-tail. That means 0.056 is in both tails, so this is 0 0.028, and this is 0 0.028. And we're centered on zero. Well, that means that I come up with 0.944. Which of the following is the largest confidence interval for which the confidence level will not contain zero? Well, remember, if I increase my confidence level, my interval gets wider. So if I go to 95%, it gets wider. And we already contain it at zero. So 98%, that's wider. So any of these are too wide. It says the largest that won't contain it. Well, 93% won't contain it because it's less than a 94.4. All right, we have to find the one that's less than the 94.4. The largest one less than 94.4. So 27 is B. All right, so when I look at this table, I see a student one, and we measured the height and arm here, height and arm. So each student is measured twice. So keep that in mind. Essentially, we kind of have an X value and a Y value. The table above shows the height in inches and the arm span in inches for 10 randomly selected high school students. Which of the following significance tests should be used to determine whether a linear relationship, well, that's the key word, uh, between a height and arm span provided the assumption the tests are met. So, because we're looking at it, each one was measured twice, so it could be paired, but we have two separate variables, an X and a Y. It's not the same variable. If, it was, if there are X and an X paired, but we have two separate variables, and they ask for a linear. So as soon as they say linear, we're doing a regression test. All right, so it's 28 is E, and that's a pretty easy problem once we discuss regression. Number 29, a botanist is studying the petal lengths measured in millimeters of two species of lilies. The box pots above illustrate the uh, distribution of petal lengths from two samples of equal size, one from species A and the other from species B. So our sample sizes are the same. That's important. That means there's just as many here as there are in this one. Uh, based on these box pots, which the following is a co correct conclusion about the data in the study. The interquartile ranges are the same. The IQR is here and the IQR is there. It's like, well, clearly this is this one is greater than 50 and this one is less than 30, so that's false. The range for species B is greater than the range for species A. It's like eh, 90 minus 10 is 80, 90 minus 10. They look to be the exact same, so that's false. There are more petal lengths that are greater than 70 for A. Well, let's look at that. B, we know 70% are greater. So right here, we know that 25% are greater. And here is like, no, 25% are greater than 60. That's false. There are more petal lengths that are greater than 40 for B. It's like, well... Here, 50% are greater for A, but here it's going to be less than 50 because there's the median, so that's false. So hopefully it's going to be E. There are more petal lengths that are less than 30 for B. Well, so we know this right here is, we have 50% right here. 50% are less than 30. 
And up here, it's like, oh, 50% or less than 40. So it's like, yeah, it looks like about 25% here. My best choice is right is at E, because this is like 25%. This is going to be more than 50%. So 29 is E. Number 30, a researcher has conducted a survey using a simple random sample of 50 registered voters to create a confidence interval to estimate the proportion of registered voters favoring the election of a certain candidate for mayor. Assume that a, a sample proportion does not change. Which of the following describes the anticipated effect on the width of the confidence interval if the researcher were to take a random sample of 200 rather than 50? So we started off with 50, all right? So I have this formula written in the in the spiral, and this will help you out if you want to memorize it. Now, if we if we just if go just logically thinking, if we go from a sample size of 50 to 200, we should get narrower. All right, so we're going to get the new interval will be narrower, but how much narrower? If we go to our formula, one over the square root of new over original. That once again, that's in the form in the uh, note spiral. If we had 1 over the square root of 200, and that's divided by 50. Well, that ends up giving me 1 over 200 divided by 50 is 4, so 1 over the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, so the new interval should be half as wide. So the new interval would be 1 half the width. Of the original so 30 is b all right and again that's because i did the one over new over original all right with the new having a size of 200 and the original having a sample size of 50. number 31 automobile brake pads are either metallic or non-metallic an experiment is to be conducted to determine whether the stopping distance is the same for both pipes of brake pads in previous studies, it was determined that car size, small and medium, is associated. Oh, there's a relationship with car size. A car type is not association, so there is no relationship. The experiment would be best done by blocking. Okay, so we always block on the variable that we think will have the greatest impact. They're telling us car type um, the car type is not associated, so blocking by car type would be wrong. We block on what's going to have an impact. They say block on. They say that size has an impact, so 31 is A. We're going to block on size of car because they told it it's associated. There's a relationship. It has an impact. All right. Thanks for watching. We have one more of these videos, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.